So in this class, uh, we will discuss a uh, problem on design of the floor by Rankine Rashaf method. So it is almost similar to your IS 4.6 uh, 2000 method. So I will take a numerical example like this. We have just take uh, the data like this. We have to design a grid floor for a hall measuring 9 meter by 12 meter. The ribs are placed at 1.2 meter center to center and the line load of this slag is 2 kilometer per meter square. So use M20 completed every floor of this field. So you can see that the design uh, runs similar to the IS 4 by 6 method which I have explained in the earlier two uh, videos. You, have, you can go through that. So here also I will assume the thickness as 80 mm. Here I have taken 80 mm. Of course, because there uh, the line load was 3 kilometer per meter square, here the line load is slightly less, therefore I have assumed uh, 80 mm. So dead load uh, comes out to be so 0 0.08 meter into 25 kilometer per meter cube density of the class you see at 2 kilometer per meter square. Finishing load 1 kilometer per meter square, you can assume line load 2 kilometer per meter square as given. So total load becomes 5 kilometer per meter square and the factor load of the design load is 1.5 times square, 7.5 kilometer per meter square. So from the table 26, uh, which is available in IS 4.6, uh, for this uh, head conditions of the slab, the moment coefficients will be same, all five are power, they are equal here because uh, we are taking 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter uh, uh, panel size. So there are 48 uh, panels like that because this is 9 meter, this is 12 meter. If you take the panel size of 1.5 meter, there will be 6 panels in this direction and there will be 8 panels in the direction. Totally, we will be having 18 to 6 uh, 48 uh, slab panels. So from the moment coefficients, you can always compute the maximum ready moment in use. Eh? So MX, MY, they are equal here. So formula is all points uh, W, U, LX square, where LX is uh, 1.5 meter here, and uh, W is the design mode 7.5, and uh, all points is 0.032. If you multiply, you get 0.54 kilometer per meter. You can see it is a very small uh, moment. So effective length, you can assume once again, uh, as the thickness divided by 2 minus the day of the bar assume, 8 mm diag if you assume, uh, 8 by 2, that is 36 mm we are going to get. The so, MVL we have to calculate, limiting the moment of resistance value uh, per, uh, of course, it is always calculated per meter width. Uh, so, 0 0.3138 FCK BD square, this formula is for AP 415 uh, speed. This you can get from that uh, IS uh, 456. Uh, so this form like that. Well. So 0.138 is for that uh, FP415 scale. So depending on the grade of steel, that car coefficient will vary. So if you substitute that, so you will get a 3.577 kilonewton meter as the value of MU limb. So you can observe that this MU limb is greater than MU value. Okay, 0.54. It is greater than 0.54. That, that means the thickness assumed is uh, sufficient. So we have already slightly more thickness because we have to accommodate the reinforcement bar and we have to provide a sufficient uh, cover of concrete. Okay. Now for this, uh, uh, for this one, for this MU value, the corresponding uh, AST you can get from the 6 to 16 from the tables. Uh, so you can always find out the uh, percentage of steel that is required from the SP16 tables just by knowing MU value, MU value. Uh, FCK value and uh, FY value and thickness of slab value. If you know these things, you can directly get the percentage of steel uh, that can be provided. From the percentage, you can compute the quantity of steel. So, PT, if you know, PT by 100, uh, PT divided by 100 uh, into that uh, sectional area. Sectional area means B into small d, effective depth. So, that if you do, you get it directly, you get AS. This is an expression in the earlier videos also. So, but we have to check for minimum steel also. Minimum steel is always 0.12 percent of the effective area, which the uh, 12 percent of the grass area, which comes out to be 96 mm square here. You can observe here minimum steel is more than uh, what we have calculated. So, therefore, we have to provide the minimum steel here. So, 96 uh, mm square is the steel that is required. So, the thing is, if you uh, take a 6 mm diameter bars, if you provide a 280 mm center to center, that is. Uh, uh, that means that is taken care. So, 96 mm square is taken care. So, now the second part is the design of the ribs, the rib portion. That is like a T beam we have to design. This procedure is similar to IS 4 by 6 method, which I had explained in detail in the earlier video. Please refer to the 
earlier video. So similar lines you have to calculate the loads and all. And uh, of course, only thing is uh, here also we have to calculate Q1 and Q2. So Q1 is the load intensity along the shorter span. Q2 is the load intensity along the longer span. Q is the total load or is the ratio of uh, the longer span to shorter span that is 1 by 9 that is 1.33 are going to get. So using these formulae, you can always compute Q1 and Q2. So in the right case method, we are going to calculate this um, uh, load intensity is using this formula and later on we are going to dimension the uh, T beam. So here ATM and the ATM is the thickness of the top span we have assumed uh, and uh, your flange portion which is uh, a portion of the slab itself because uh, beam acts as a T beam the BF value, width of flange you have to calculate B plus 12 times uh, TF which comes out to be here. B here is 100 mm we are going to assume here plus 12 times the AT it comes up to 1006 p. So for this, uh, once again we have to calculate the moment of resistance. I call it as a Q dash. Uh, this formula is available once again in for T beam section. The moment of resistance formula uh, is uh, taken from the IS456 code. Assuming the neutral axis at the bottom of the flange. Same procedure what we have done in the IS method. Uh, same neutral axis I am going to assume here. So this is the corresponding expression for the uh, moment of resistance. If you substitute and simplify, you will get to 54.24. But uh, whatever you have got earlier, that is design loads you have calculated for those design loads, uh, uh, Q1, Q2. For those Q1, Q2 values, we had calculated the, the design moments, MUX and MUY. This is by Reinkind's uh, method. So in Reinkind's method, this is the change for calculating the moments. This is the difference. Okay? So you have to use this. Uh, this to formulate uh, to calculate the design moments in right case method. So compare this uh, moment of resistance value with the higher of these two. So anyway, it is 254.24. Uh, actual moment is 109.9, which is less than the moment of resistance. That means is same. The moment of resistance of the section is more than the uh, maximum bending moment, then it is safe. Section is safe. So in this case, so once uh, you check that the section is safe, then you can compute the reinforcement in both the directions. For calculating reinforcement in the shorter direction, we have to take this MUX value. For computing the reinforcement in the longer direction, we have to take MUY value. So those uh, directly uh, you can get the value of reinforcement from SP16 by taking the value for beam design. So once you know MU value, MU by BD square. Fck and Fy for these values, these three values, you can directly get the value of Pt, percentage speed that can be provided in that field. Once you get the Pt value, AST will be Pt divided by 100 into B into D. So this is the formula to find the AST. If you use that method, you will get for this moment, 109.9 kilometer meter, corresponding steel you have to provide is 4 bars of 16 mm diameter. Similarly, for longer span, one of the longer span, we have to design the reinforcement for MUY. It is slightly less than 61.8 kilometer meter. So, for same procedure is adopted. So, from the tables available in the SP16 book, so you can get uh, two numbers of 16 mm diameter bars are uh, enough. That is the, that you can check. So, all the tables are available. And coming to the shear design, as I already told, in the case of uh, grid floors, uh, shear uh, contribution uh, will not be that much. So, shear criteria is only nominal. So, you can always calculate BUX and BUY, that is the real design shear force uh, along shorter span and longer span, which is given by those two formulae Q1 into L1, LX by 2, Q2 into L1 by 2. So, very nominal shear you are going to get. So, tau V can calculate, tau C you can compare. So, compare the tau C with tau V. And all those things, if you do only nominal shear reinforcement, that is normally two length, 8mm diameter at 300 mm center to center. This is the nominal shear reinforcement. You can directly uh, provide those reinforcement without design because shear criteria it is not uh, an important criteria in the design of slabs. So, later on, you can always uh, have the detailing of the uh, T beam 
along with this plan, which I had explained uh, in the IS 456 2000 method also. So, only difference here is formula for this Q1, Q2, MUX, MUY, VUX, VUY. So, these things uh, are different in the case of uh, 9 times uh, method, whereas in the IS 456 method, we are using coefficients. Here, we are using uh, these uh, formulae uh, for the for calculation of bending moments and the design is done uh, based on using by using sp16 charts